Okay, hello. So things are going to be a little different this time. Our business is called Taste of Tradition, and we are an app that allows our users to add their own recipes to the site. So we brought you all our own recipes from our own culture. collection of special recipes from every single corner of the globe, from the spicy salsas of Mexico to the savory egg rolls of Asia and beyond. Hi, I'm Nadia Viretta, the CEO, and welcome to Taste of Tradition. Our platform offers easy to follow cultural food recipes excuse me, completed with the stories behind each dish to ensure your creations are true to their cultural roots. With us, you'll not only explore, learn, and recreate traditional dishes, but you'll also embark on a cultural journey without even leaving your home. So let's bring the world together one at a time. Again, I'm Nadia Viretta, the CEO. I'm Natalie Torres, the CMO. I'm Enrique Cantor, and I'm the CFO. I'm Chris Washington, I'm the CTO. So the problem that we're trying to solve here today is that many people want to share their cultural food recipes, but don't have the platform to post them, share the stories behind them, and add them to their favorites on a digital and physical cookbook all in one place. So as soon as you log into our app, you'll be greeted by our login and sign-up screen. Here's the home screen. You'll be able to scroll through multiple recipes, each having their own different tags of where they're from, like, latest, and search options. Each having their own hot topic, so you can search up, oh, I have this in my refrigerator, I have this in my refrigerator, so I'm going to search up this, see if I can get a quick result. And here's the overview. It shows you where it's from, how long it will take you, a snippet of the background of the recipe, how much ratings it has, and how much likes it has. So here is the, rest, the ingredients. So here's the rest of the backstory. You'll be able to follow this person and favorite this person, this recipe. Here's the favorite screen. Each one of these have their own little tags telling you what they are, where they're from, and how they say dinner. You'll be able to scroll through the top right there to go to the specific tag, like brunch, lunch, and breakfast. And right here is an advertisement for buying your first cookbook, which would be 20% off. Here is our subscriptions. So for the zero dollars a month, you'll have ads, you'll have no customizable cookbook, and you have a limited amount of favorites. For our $4.99 month per, month, $4.99 per month, you have no ads, 60 favorites, and no customizable cookbook. And for $7.99 a month, you have no ads, unlimited favorites, and a customizable cookbook. Our unique value proposition is, our app allows you to share your own recipes with their own unique backstories, as well as search other recipes up and share them all with your friends. This is Lisa. She's a 32-year-old Caucasian woman with two kids, and she want, and she's running out of things to make them for dinner every night and is looking for something new. With us, <clears throat> she will find many different cultural food recipes while also introducing the background behind those recipes to her children. This is Sue and Rick. They are a 60-year-old retired Asian couple with a big family 
and have a bunch of recipes they want to share on both sides, but don't have the platform to do so. But with Taste Tradition, they can. For our competitors, we have Curious Cuisine, Authentic Food Quest, and New York Times Cooking. For all of our competitors, they do have recipes on their site, but only two of our competitors actually have the stories behind them, but they do not state where they got this research from. And for New York Times Cooking, they're our only competitor that has a digital cookbook, but they do not allow their users to actually have a physical cookbook where they get their recipes from the site and print them out for a physical version. And lastly, out of all of our competitors, none of them have uploadable recipes where their users can actually upload their own family recipes that have been cherished with them for generations. So how we'd initially get our customers, we would have a free trial. We also have ads on our social medias or YouTubes. And we have um, weekly favorites, like um, for example, if you go on our site, pop-ups will show up and it will be showing the weekly favorites and they'll click on it and want to try it. And we also want to have our own YouTube channel where we can cook um, with some of the people that have been posting on our app. And how we keep our customers, we continuously be making improvements and updates on our app. And we also want to have environmentally friendly options such as a composting tab, and we'll have cookbook discounts that have to do with the holidays or the months coming up. And lastly, how we will continuously be growing customers, we'll be adding new features, and we'll have weekly recommendations like pop-ups again. And we'll also be having better quality YouTube videos that make our um, videos look more professional by having better camera quality or better microphones. Did you know that food has the remarkable power to unite people from diverse cultures and backgrounds? It's more than just a meal. It's a cherished part of our cultural heritage, passed down through generations. At Taste of Tradition, learn, eat, and explore the stories behind each dish. Join us now to experience the recipes from cultures across the world with our exclusive subscription offer. Sign up today and receive 50% off our $7.99 subscription. Taste the world's traditions and embrace the connection through food. Download and join Taste of Tradition today. And then based on those results, here's our MVP recap. Um, so based on the day that our ad, ran, ad, ad had ran, we can multiply these results by 10 to get the results about for the 10 days that it was supposed to run. And here below, you can see that the people who engaged within our app was mobile phones, other than tablets, computers, or TV screens. From our ad, we also did find that our targeted demographic, which was initially women, was equal between males and females, and now we will be targeting males and females equally. So for our marketing plan, um, one of the ideas that we had was we would have um, new updates and um, stuff like that for our users on our Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We would keep our users updated on things with new features or new um, setups or if something's running down. We would also keep them on news updates if we have any, you know, like, um, events we were planning, you know, at local uh, restaurants, and we would also follow up on the latest trends to get the word out about Taste of Tradition. We would also be doing collabs, like Nadia mentioned, we would be doing a YouTube channel. We want to invite people onto our cooking channel and, you know, tell the stories uh, behind this dish, and we would kind of do a Q&A with them. We would do, like, influencers, like, cooking, um, you know, known cooking people, and we would also invite our family members. We would also like to partner with big um, uh, companies such as HelloFresh. If you guys are all you know, familiar with HelloFresh, they provide the recipes for their users and also the food. So if we were to partner with them, we would provide the cultural food recipes and they would provide the food to the users. We would also do a lot of branding with our business. Like um, you know, we have booths set up at local farmers markets and as soon as our users see our logo, they know who they are and who they are loyal to. This is Gladys Sanchez, this is our mentor. She is a graduated from Fresno State with a bachelor's degree in business. And she actually has her own um, business selling birria sauces. And she one day wants to hope to make it to Fuco and Winco. And why she helps us is because she is in the food industry. She also has a podcast where she tried to invite us on. And we are setting up that meeting and she wants to just talk about our business and why it's important for youth like us to get involved into the food industry. Okay, now for our market sizing. For our total addressable market, our projected market size for all of the United States 
is 910 million. For our total addressable market, our projected market size for all of California is 110 million. And then finally, for our projected market size for our serviceable attainable market, our projected market size for all of Fresno is 2.8 million with a conversion rate of 2.5%. And then next, here is our revenue. Our year one revenue is 2.8 million. Our year two revenue is 3 million. And finally, for year three, our revenue is 3.3 million. And I got this from our subscription price of 4.99. And each year, there was a growth rate of 10% that I found from Statista.com. For our income and SGNA, for our revenue for year one, um, our revenue of 2.8 million subtracted by our SGNA cost of 440,000 would get us a net income of 2.3 million. And then finally, for year two. Our revenue of three million subtracted by our SGNA cost of 522,000 would get us a net income of 2.4 million. And finally, for year three, our revenue of 3.3 million subtracted by our SGNA cost of 610 thousand dollars would get us a net income of 2.6 million. So, for our key metrics, how we will get our um, our definition of success, we will want to get 1,000 recipes per year and we'll also be wanting 100 um, users a month. We'll, excuse me, we'll also be wanting 100 users a month. And um, we want to sell at least 15 cookbook, cookbooks a month as well. For our capital ask, we are asking for $295,000 for a stake of 5% of our business. For the use of a capital for consulting and PPE, we plan on buying a machine that will make our cookbooks instead of us purchasing those cookbooks from other people. And we, plan, we, we also want a fund for consulting for someone who can help us make our business better. And next, for marketing, we want to do content marketing so people can know our business and let it be out there. For our exit strategy in year one, we will be trying to actually launch this app. In year two, we'll be adding features and new updates that people have been like consistently um, complaining about. And um, lastly, for year three, we will be trying to sell to a strategic buyer, such as HelloFresh, Hello Fresh, as we said before. So for our environmental impact, we as a team, we have users that produce food, and that causes a lot of food waste. Over 96 million pounds of food goes into the landfill. And we want to kind of decrease that number by giving our users tips and tricks on composting and why it's important. So if you have livestock, you can feed it to your livestock. There are certain things that can go into um, composting and what can be thrown away. So we would also kind of like give them that idea of what can be composted. And also you can use it for your soil, for gardening. That's a really healthy thing for your plants. If you scan this QR code, it will take you to our landing page. And if you actually sign up for our landing page, you'll get a 20% off one of our subscriptions. So at Taste of Tradition, we provide a platform of easy to follow um, cultural food recipes completed with the stories behind each dish to ensure your creations are true to their cultural roots. So please join us to bring the world together one recipe at a time. Abrigado, Akon. Wado. Dalu. Thank you. Thank you. A <clears throat> um, <clears throat> couple questions. Okay, do you have it where you can segment it by like vegan? So like you don't have to go through all these different recipes and you get through a recipe and it turns out it's not a vegan recipe. Is there a way you can have a tab for composting? You have a tab where you can do, you know, vegan recipes versus, you know, regulars. Yes, we do have that. Like, as shown in the search bar, you can search up all the vegan recipes. Okay. And then <clears throat> the people that upload recipes, which is one of the features you talked about, do they get compensated? Wait, I'm sorry? Do they get paid? Do they, are you, so if they upload a recipe, like, you know, I'm, I'm from Sweden, so, or my mom's from Sweden, I want to do the Swedish meatballs recipe that she had made and so forth, and I, do, do I get compensated, or how does, how does the person that uploads a recipe, one, get compensated, two, how do you vet it, um, is there a vetting process, and what would that entail, and you know, what, what are some of the metrics that you use to vet the people that would upload it, do they go through, a quality control person first? Does it go directly to the website? So how, how would something like that work? So basically, um, for like the website, yes, there will be like management over time looking at different things and there will be betting just to make sure everything is like, nothing bad is on the website. So everybody be looking over and 
<laughs> and they wouldn't, and they should like not get paid. They would get a rating. So basically, the person who would upload these recipes, they get have a profile. You can you know follow this certain person, kind of like a bragging right. You can say, but maybe we could take into consideration on what they like. Get so for instance, they might have an Instagram page of their mm -hmm. own, and they can get more followers. Okay, so they will get exposure. Yeah. Um, and then the other question I had is, you were saying that you were showing a revenue of two million eight hundred thousand for the first year, but I see, you know, in your first year you're launching your app and so forth. So I did the math. It's like if it's two hundred two point eight million, and I divide it by four four dollars and ninety nine cents, that means you'd have to have um, over five hundred sixty one thousand one hundred twenty two users. Now the other thing is you're going to have attrition too. They're not going to be there every, you know, they might only sign up for a month or so forth and you got to keep repeating it. It seems pretty high to get 561,122 in a year, and especially launching and all these kind of things. So, that's, I just have a, a little bit of a concern about the, you know, the first year numbers. Just because from what I can see from my user. Do you got your tracking until the same night? Yeah. Because you on your other spring it talks about adding one hundred per year mm -hmm. and you're closing out a per year with the next strategy so about like three hundred three hundred times that amount is it? So it's just this is just a cross section cut to really look at it and challenge it to see if it's ready for presentation so you have to look at that. Yeah, and then the other thing I would want to know is is what's your attrition rate? Um, you know, so People are going to sign up, but they only might sign up for a month and then quit. Mm -hmm. That means you got to get somebody else to replace that person, plus you're trying to find a new person to keep growing. So you're always going to be trying to grow, but you're also going to be trying to, at the same time, replace the people that are. So I'd like to know maybe what your attrition rate would be. So, you know, for every 10 that we get per month, we lose three or four. So that means you've got to have the extra three or four the next month, plus whatever growth that for that month in order to meet your metrics. So I just I would just need to know a little bit more about what the attrition rate might be because not everybody's gonna just you know be there forever. I think it's the, the monthly we makes it pretty easy. It's only four ninety nine, but it's still something to think about because you have your growth rate, you need to kind of think about an attrition rate too. And the and the devil's advocate on that George Brown was the first person to, that I know of to apply it debit card auto renewal on a subscription for a gym. And I was there when he bought the first gym in Fresno in the 90s. And all you had at that time was the ability to use your ATM card at a bank to take up money or at Carl's Jr. And that, that's the only place you could use to, to get put something done through your card. When George made that work for his gym, he created a revenue model and he put the price low enough that people didn't want to cancel just because they didn't make it to the gym for a month. Maybe they were on travel, they're like, well, I'm not going to cancel because i got to go to a sign up. So I think your, your subscription rate is low enough that people might not race to cancel it if they didn't get to use it. They'll let $4.99 bleed out of their account for a long time before they say that's too much, in my opinion. So the bigger the net you throw, the more you can get in. And the lower you keep the subscription rate for base services, the more you could gain something. But let's not get excited about not having a product that everybody wants, because you don't want to just get money out of them and not provide something. So I, I think your numbers need some work. Um, and, and I know it's hard to do this to get ready for your presentation, because you have pages you're looking at going, oh gosh, we have to answer all these. But it's not necessarily part of where you are in and evolving and birthing and creating this business. So um, I'd like to continue on with uh, some of the other thoughts of the other judges. Yeah, and just my final thought, I think it's really cool. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get distracted by some of the things, but it is important, those are things that I meant. But, but I also want to take away is I think it's really cool. I think it's fun. Um, you know, my wife and I kind of, and the reason I asked about vegan is we kind of moved away to a more of a vegetarian vegan lifestyle. So we do a lot of recipes now, and we're looking for a lot of recipes, and you know, to find some really unique things that we could do, well, such as this, is, would really kind of fit in our lifestyle. So it does attract me, I think, and to Josh's point, four ninety nine is you know a good price. 
you know, I think it lends itself that your attrition rate could be, you know, somewhat slow. Yeah, but, but yeah, there's some tweaking there, but I think overall, I think it's really cool. I like the idea that people can, you know, get their ego stroked and, you know, put up their recipes and, hey, this is mom's, you know, whatever, and stuff like that. So, all in all, I think it's good. There's just some things that we just kind of need to work out on the number side, you know, because the ask is a little too high, basically, because I don't think the numbers match up. But I really think the whole thing is pretty cool. I, I, I really do. I think it's, it's I, I like it a lot. How would you vet recipes coming through? How we, we've checked them, we've got to try it out in a test kitchen, we go, oh, here's a recipe, let's see if you taste it and go, yeah, and see if you don't die. <laughs> kind of like, uh, that's why we kind of want to create a YouTube channel. To okay. Our uh, users more of a visual instead of like reading because more people are like a visual learners. And also we would want to create the YouTube to like maybe add their own kind of twist to the recipe. Kind of like, oh, maybe instead of adding lemon, I add you know, like honey or something. Oh, like you're that. saying how to improve it. No, I'm saying it is what they sent yeah. even going to come out it doesn't as taste it's good. Like, what if it says three bat wings, two eyelashes of a toad, <laughs> three toenails of a pig, and then you're like, what did we just make? And then you brew it in a cauldron. You know? <laughs> so how are you going to make sure that you have quality coming through? How do you check that? Or have we thought of that yet? I mean, it's like some traditions or cultures have, like, different recipes. So if you're not, like, interested in it, like... If obviously you see like a bat wing, don't like, okay, if you're not interested. So we're like, people cook things that they think that is delicious. So if they think bat wings are delicious, I mean. So just go for it, kind of free form. Just let it let it go and see what happens. Well, we it. actually were planning on like buying um, into some companies that will like watch over our app and like see, be checking the recipes that come in. And because we also have a comments tab, so we'll be filtering through that, making sure everything's appropriate. Yeah, okay. So I, I just want to sort of uh, re-articulate some of the points. Um, it's not just pretty cool, it's amazing. Like what you guys are doing is, is really amazing. Thank I you. love the uniqueness of it. I think excellent space, the fact that you went you know, after an app, I think that's marvelous. The fact that you're able to find something unique or something you know that you could put your own brand around. Wonderful job, wonderful job. Like th this is a really cool business idea. Um, if you go back to the revenue picture, uh, revenue graph, so th this is kind of just FYI. If your first year revenue was less than half a million dollars, now all of a sudden your, your story is much more critical. You know, we're not going to start off with huge. The other thing is you now have this huge growth trend. Like right now, you're, if I look at your growth trend, it's pretty small. If you started lower, so there is something about polishing your story and you know making the numbers more realistic and all the rest of that. That's tweaking, but you know, wonderful booklet. I love the food. You guys did a really, really good job of, you know, uh, as I was saying in the morning, um, to some of the other guys, really, really good job of meeting all your scholastic requirements and putting together a really good business and a really good presentation. So kudos on that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> So, once again, you've impressed me. <laughs> Good job. And I'll say this again, I said this, I said this in your last presentation, and I'll say it again to start off with. Um, a lot of the teams did a very good job presenting, but part of business and being an entrepreneur is selling yourself and selling your business and selling the products yourself. Um, and you did that perfectly today. You gave me a sample of each of the, one of your cultures, and uh, you impress me with the food, you impress me with the drink, and that's what you have to do if you're a startup. you got to sell it. And we try and teach it here at Patino. I try to implement that as well when I talk to you and, and your teams. You guys did it. So congratulations. I, great job again. Uh, there are some things, though, I'm going to have to touch on. Uh, we're on it right now. Um, echoing. Um, what some of the judges said, your revenue is a bit high. It's not realistic. Um, and I have that on here. And then also, I'm going to uh, hone in on this. Uh, the categories of if you're a vegan or vegetarian, um, also diet restrictions, that should be something really that you should be selling on too. Because when people want a, a meal, they don't want to think about it and they have diet restrictions. Let me tell you, I spend tons of time Tons, ton, a lot of my hours of my day after working, and I have to look the right recipe for my diet restrictions, and it takes a lot of time. 
It does. It takes a lot of time, and then I have to go out and shop for it. It's like, ah, right? So um, I think it would be beneficial to honestly, to have, to get good traction right out of the gate, is to have the options very easily. If you do have diet restrictions, if you're vegetarian and vegan, uh, whatever it is, you have those options really clearly laid out so people can get cooking as soon as possible and watch the videos instead of siphoning through videos or tutorials for you know half an hour, hour, they want to eat, right? So that's just positive feedback, just, you know. But um, other than that, I thought everything was good. Um, partnering with HelloFresh and other companies would also help you too. I thought that was great uh, that you're doing. Everything that you, you, you said last time when you presented, you've actually taken to heart and you've listened. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Uh, other than that, uh, that's all I have for right now, um, but I might come back for one other thing that I'll let someone else look at. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I really like the idea of the product. I think it's, it's really cool. Um, I could definitely see myself uh, using an app like this. It kind of hits home. My wife and I constantly, every Sunday, it's like, okay, what are we going to make this week? I don't know. And then every single time, we're going through our Facebook feed of all our saved videos, right? So if we can get an app that really um, categorize that and help us you know, choose, that would be really beneficial. Um, I, I would have a suggestion, maybe something, a feature you could do on there is maybe your top rated or, or most favorited recipes. Have somebody do a video of how to make that recipe for new users. And um, I think the best way you're gonna keep somebody on board or, or maybe they're trying to free one out and get them to pay for it, if the first three recipes they try on there is terrible, I got a new cookbook. Honestly, I did this like a month ago, got a new cookbook. First recipe I tried was horrible, haven't touched it since. <laughs> like it just is like, oh, don't trust this cookbook anymore. So, um, you know, for new users, maybe make it really easy for them, set themselves up for success when their first few recipes they try are not only popular, but they do them correctly. Because they could screw it up, the recipe could be right, and they're not going to trust you. So, um, the video would go a long way to help them do that. Also, if you can create subgroups or allow people to, to join groups, um, if my family, my in-laws, they're all Cuban, there's like a ton of them, and they all have their recipes and things like that, it's impossible for us to get together and for, us, for them to teach us how to do things. So if we just said, hey, we have our Biddy family uh, group on this app, now you have the whole family gonna join the app, right? Because we all want to communicate with each other, and it's just a good way to share all personal family recipes but then other people can access the recipes too. But I can go on there and quickly search. I just want my family's recipes. Uh, what what would you guys anticipate making if somebody only did the ad based subscription? Like the free version. <laughs> the free version. Oh. Yeah. What would you guys okay. would be on the free version? Like from our cookbooks, if they buy them. Well, because you said you're gonna do ads. Yeah. So what are the ads pay? We haven't really looked into like how much we charge for each ad and click. Okay. Yeah, but we can take it into consideration. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, have the OTT marketing where, you know, companies will sign on. There's companies that will help you sell ad space and things like that. Um, I'll, I'll write in the comments here a little later about printing the cookbooks and things like that. I'm a printer, so oh. I'll uh, uh, give you some notes there on, on, offline. Um, also, maybe you might want to, as recipes are being added, there's a lot of, maybe there's a way to categorize or say, hey, this is the authentic way, this is the traditional way to make this dish, and mark that as like, hey, this is the long history one. But then also, people may have twists or modernizations to those recipes, so kind of categorize those differently, so I would know like, okay, this is the traditional one, this has bat wings. Now we use pork ribs, like, you know, that, <laughs> that type of thing. Um, which one of you guys is the techie that can create the app? There's. Okay, so there is a techie on the group then. <laughs> cool. Um, and then one final uh, suggestion or feature for, for the app itself is allow users to look at a calendar and just literally plug in, okay, Monday we plan to make this one, so they're making their shopping list. Mm -hmm. And then as they plug the, the recipes in, it creates a shopping list for you. And as they're plugging in recipes, Maybe you can say, hey, you have a lot of ingredients to make this dish as well. May we suggest you make this one too. So you don't, you can eliminate food waste. If I'm buying, you know, a whole thing of celery, but recipes only call for two stops, the rest of it's going to go to waste because I don't have any of the recipes calling for celery. 
Now, if you can say, hey, these recipes are good with some of your same ingredients, you're not going to waste so much food. Thank you. I wanted to say that you guys did blow down on your presentation. It's amazing. I come here once in a while and I see the progress of your presentation, your slides. You have a whole, you have voice over your video. That was amazing. I don't know who did that. Is that one of your voice? That was awesome. I like that. Um, one suggestion I wanted to give you is maybe I see that you have lots of Asian food on your website. Maybe partner with Asian stores where they can help customers to go find those recipes. Because sometimes, yes, they would like to cook, but where can they buy the recipes? Mm -hmm. Or buy the ingredients, yeah. the meat, you know, mm -hmm. all those stuff that make the food. And slow down. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Job. Yeah. One more thing. Yeah. With your environmental impact for with the compost, I also garden. Um, I think you could maybe tap into another revenue stream with the, the food that they're wasting or not using. Um, that's just maybe me. I could be wrong. But um, a lot of people do just throw away their their food when compost is the best fertilizer you could probably buy. Um, so. I think if you had something to sell them, like seeds or any other type of link to like Home Depot to build their own compost box or build something where you can sell those products, you could have another revenue stream. I don't know, to, to, to help with the environmental impact. That's just me taking outside the box here, but uh, you could disagree. I think that could be a possible thing too, because we have so much food waste here in this country. So uh, just something to think about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.